seven of the SEC. John Sunbold, what does A&M have to do to pull off the upset tonight? Well, I think the key would be to bend it towards how they want to play, as Buzz, Buzz Williams would say. They've got to slow this Alabama team down. Alabama's a team that if they can get turnovers, if our a and forces, then they can get some easy buckets on the other end. Shackelford hits the deck. He thought he was tripped or pushed, and that is exactly what the call will be as it comes in. And it's Obaseki whistled for the foul, so our first foul, 11 seconds into the action. There's Buzz Williams fired up in his third year at College Station. This team is playing well. A and M coming off a couple wins. Inside, wow. terrific pass. Bediako on the slam. Yeah, the Aggies have won three out of the last four. Their metrics are actually pretty good. If they can win a game like this, maybe do some damage in Tampa. Who knows? Obaseki on the drive, erased by one of the top shot blockers in the league, the freshman Bediako. Well, we know Obaseki's athletic. We know he likes to put it on the floor. He's strong, physical. He takes it to the rim. But if Bediako's back there, he is a terrific shot blocker. Alabama obviously can play big, or they can get a little smaller with Gurley. When he comes in the game, they're a little more mobile, doing some different things with a smaller lineup. Shot clock under five. On the drive, high off the window, off the mark is Taylor. Davison, the freshman, coughed it up. Great defense that time by Coleman. Great hands by Q Jackson to knock it away. This AM team comes in, Mike, and they're confident offensively. They've been shooting the basketball better, moving it better. That is Tyrese Radford on the three. He continues to amaze me. He's one of the best rebounders out there at 6'2", but he also has some offensive prowess like a guard. Yeah, he had 19 in the win against Ole Miss, hit two of three beyond the three-point line, shot 8 of 12. And that's what I think's happened with A&M this season. Each guy's coming either out of a shell or they've expanded their game offensively. Share the basketball well. They don't turn it over a lot. Turnover margins, they're the best in the league. They have been streaky. They might be the only team in college basketball to win eight in a row and then lose eight in a row. Little bully ball that time inside by Coleman. And one thing when you hear Buzz Williams talk post game or any interviews is how much this team trusts each other. You and I had them when they were 4 0 in the SEC and hosted the Kentucky Wildcats. That's Betty Ako inside with a nifty move. At that time against Kentucky, they were 4-0 in the league. They were up 13 in the second half at home and then surrendered the lead. They then went on to lose the next seven after that. So it's really been just an uneven year for this team overall. But any time you lose, take a look. When you lose eight games in a row, many teams would really lose themselves for the year. Right. And this team's not done that. Credit to Buzz Williams, his staff. And the players, they're playing again tonight without Marcus Williams, the transfer guard from Wyoming, who's taken a leave of absence. And he was a big part of winning a lot of games. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Drive and kick sets up an open three. Shackelford with nothing but the bottom of the net, the number six scorer in the SEC. It's Alabama's ability off the dribble to get to the rim. And they put so much pressure that when you help out, they kick it around on the outside. They've got terrific shooters. What they've done lately, even though they're still not shooting the three at a great clip on the year, they've amped up their defense. And when you and I get a chance to talk to Nate Oates the last few weeks, it's all about what they can do better on that end of the floor. Great contest that time by Bediaco. And when they do, then they can run. They got, again, all of their guys outside Bediaco can shoot threes. They can all attack the rim off the dribble. Bama three for three from the floor and finally a miss as Shackelford hits the back iron and then a foul on Keon Ellis. Nate Oates led Alabama to an SEC championship a year ago. Again, they are quadrific. They've got seven quad one wins. That's one of the top marks in America, not to mention 11 quad two wins. And all that with the number one strength of schedule in the country. Think of the out-of-conference wins, Gonzaga, Baylor, 
There's a lot to like about that resume. Well, they got four wins against the net top ten, right? Gonzaga was number one when they beat them. Houston, number three. Baylor, number five. Tennessee, number eight. So it's been an impressive year for Nate Oates, but also a frustrating year. They've right. had some games where they haven't looked as good defensively. When I talked to him this morning about this matchup, what was his biggest concern? He said, you know, a and unorthodox the way they play. They're tough. They're physical. They'll change a lot of things on you. He said, in our building, we've got to play defense. We've got to get out. We need to be active offensively and, and get the game in the 80s versus the low 60s. Quentin Jackson knocks down the first free throw, the senior out of Los Angeles. And the leading scorer at 14 points a game for the Aggies. You go back to those out-of-conference wins. Remember, that was Baylor at full strength. That was Houston at full strength with Sasser, who, of course, is gone for the Cougars now. So they beat those teams at their peak. Jackson two for two, and we're tied at seven. Always three-quarter pressure from A&M. They may be trapping. They may not. They could be soft. They could be hot. They change it about every time down. Quinterly now back in the ball game. And they'll turn you over if you're not careful. They're eighth in the country in forced turnovers. And a technical foul. Did they get Buzz? Yeah, Buzz has been uh, working the official since the opening play when the guy got tripped. Right. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, that, was, that was about three and a half minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is interesting because A&M just got a stop on defense, got the rebound. I'm just wondering if Buds has a dinner date or something because he, <laughs> he, he, he keeps going. Might have a reservation, one of the fine establishments downtown here in Tuscaloosa. Yes. But he has been on them the entire time. Well, he never lacks intensity. We, we certainly know that. Miles connects... On the back-to-back -back technical free throws. Bottom right corner, you see Buzz there after this play. and Got a few choice words in. And I believe that was Todd Austin yeah. teeing him up. Yeah, Todd Austin, he's just kind of had enough. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's be done. Let's play ball. Two-point game. Yeah, Mike, you think of this A&M team. You've got two games this week. Then you have next week. And as Buzz Williams said in his press conference, if we want to play more, these two weeks are key. We just got to take one at a time. But these two weeks are hugely important. No question. Huge take there by Ratford just hanging in the air. And then Banks at home back to a tie ball game. Shackelford weaving. Finds Davison. Shackelford. And a reach-in foul. That'll go against Quinton Jackson. And it'll bring us to our first media timeout. Even Steven with 15.43 to go from Tuscaloosa. The game's in Tampa. And Alabama will try to defend its crown. But, boy, is it going to be tough to do. I mean, with the exception of Kentucky, it's been a long time since somebody else has won back-to-back -back SEC tournament championships. And the top of this league. When you start talking about Kentucky and Auburn, and then the way Arkansas and Tennessee are playing right now, and then, oh, by the way, here comes Alabama winners of five out of the last six. That is a heavy, heavy top half of this conference. And the challenge to repeat this year for Alabama is they will not have the double bye like they did last year. They only you know, played right. three games. Now you have to play four. So that's a challenge when Alabama goes there. Now, again, if they go... The way they're playing, if they're shooting it and playing defense, they'll be right there again. It was funny watching that replay. You see those uh, NBA players on there, right? right? Even just recently, Trenton Watford, who took that final shot, missed it, just signed a new four-year deal. Undrafted, uh, a two-way player for Portland, and just signed a four-way deal. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to him. And congratulations to Herb Jones. I yeah, actually saw him at a game in person in New Orleans this year. He comes off the bench. And the first thing he does, pick up a steal, gets a breakaway <laughs> layup, gets a rebound on the other end, blocks a shot in the next defensive. I mean, I'm watching Herb Jones like he's back at Alabama. He was so special. And obviously, as Nate Oates has told us, they miss Herb Jones. You know you're going to have a setback defensively when you lose a guy like that. But what he'll tell you is that 
he just needs some better effort like they've got enough athleticism and quickness particularly with their guards to play better defensively than they have so far it's a challenge uh, Quinterly we know is maybe the quickest or one of the quickest in college basketball when he has the ball right uh, when he doesn't have the ball sometimes he may not be the quickest on defense and, and that's an effort level but certain coaches might tell you like a Bruce Pearl there are a lot of players that max out on one end that can't max out on the other and, and that's the challenge he has sometimes he thinks his guys really do well on defense and they're tired on offense right they're, they're, there's a time to rest and it's very difficult sometimes as a player to, to know when and when not to one guy's defense who has been good Keon Ellis on that steal he averages nearly two a game that's been pretty solid this season. They need some other folks to step it up. And of course, you got Betty Ako to defend the rim. There's a turnover, and that's what AM does as well as anybody in the league. They turned you over, and that leads to an easy bucket on the other end for Jackson. Yeah, great hands by Q again. Jackson's having a fabulous season. Over 14 points a game, shoots it well outside. He's their best guy to make an offensive play when they need one. Look at that 10.4 steals. Another steal, another turnover. And again, on the other end, they missed the bunny. Offensive rebound and foul was Henry Coleman. Exactly what Nate Oates worried about. Yep. If they're if they're nonchalant with the ball, AM doesn't mess around. And that's really that's how AM has to win this game. As you mentioned at the top, they're not trying to win a shootout and go 85-80 tonight. They want to turn Bama over and win a more lower scoring game. Well, these are the two best offensive rebounding teams in the league. And so who wins that battle, right? Who, who wins the rebounding battle? That last foul was on Ellis, so he's got two early fouls. He'll take a breather. Coleman finds a curling Ratford who banks it from the left side, nifty shot, and AM is on top, 13-12. Aggie's very efficient on the offensive end. Good cuts, solid screens, they're getting good looks. Aggies with nine points off of four Alabama turnovers. Make it five. Well, Aggies are doing a heck of a job when the guy goes baseline. Bama guy drives baseline. They try to bottle him up with a little bit of size. Because Bama loves to go baseline and throw that cross-court pass to their three-point shooter. Something that Buzz Williams has been known for going back to his days. At several stops, including Virginia Tech. They are going to get after you defensively, and they're going to hustle like Ratford did on that play. Good spin move. Rebound. Looked like he was going back out. Spun Rat back in for an easy layup. Boots with the bucket. Aggies up three. Inside rejection follow rejected again by Henderson two great blocks the former Arkansas Razorback Thirteen and change remaining first half the Aggies up by three Jackson Hits it from 18. Again, efficiency. Didn't have anything on the break. Ran a play. Patient. Waiting for Jackson to come back around off the double screen. Jackson with six. Ratford with nine to lead the way. Here's a three from Shackelford on the response. 37% from downtown this year. That is the fifth best in the league. And defensively, you've got to get him off his spot. When he can catch it and just shoot it, you've got to make him, even though he's a great shooter on the move, you've got to make him move. You can't let a shooter like Shackelford get into a rhythm and be comfortable every time. Jackson, jab step, drive, dish. Coleman gets it back in traffic. Back iron on the second attempt. Rojas taking it strong and gets it to throw. Mike, you can tell already in this game, this is a game where guards have to go back and get rebounds. You really got to help your bigs out and get rebounds. 17 all exciting first eight minutes of this half.
Diara lost it. Davison numbers four on one for Bama. Rojas, one of the seniors on this squad, coming back from that injured knee in late December and has been a welcome addition. Ratford on the crossover. Ooh. Oh, beautiful feed inside the Coleman. What a half for Ratford. You know, Davidson, Garden, Ratford tried to just look to think that Ratford was going over the top. Quick crossover, great bounce pass. That'll be a lot of fun to watch Tyrese Radford next year. Baseline J pops out. Diara had it. Rojas corrals it. Quinterly. And flying in is Henderson. Tie game, ten and a half to go, first half. Radford feeling it, not that time. Right into Rojas. Good play, good save by Shackleford. Davison spinning, kicking, and Quinterly stepped out of bounds. Timeout on the floor, 10-15 to play. Ratford leading all scorers with nine. The pace is good. In last night, but couldn't get wins, couldn't get the big baskets when you need them, which is always the separation. About the teams that are in the middle up top and those that are on the bottom. Absolutely. How, how about you get a bucket? How about this? I, I mentioned it's been a while since anybody other than Kentucky has repeat. As SEC Tournament Champions, I look at my phone during the break. It's a text from my man, Wimp Sanderson. He says, hey, we won three in a row some time ago, probably before you were born, Morgan. <laughs> well, I was alive. I do remember those were some great teams that Wimp had. But it's been a while. It'll be tough to do this year, that's for sure. That's another turnover on Alabama. And that is seven. So, I mean, if you want a formula for an upset for Texas A&M, that's where it all starts. Well, it's a turnovers. Defensively, they've just got a terrific game plan, right? Stay in front of your guy when he goes. When the, when the pass is crossed, their help and recover is terrific. They're quick defensively. You know, when I, when I look at Texas A&M, John, and you tell me what you think, there's there's one of those teams in the lower half where you just say boy they're just one player away maybe a score right because they do so many things well but that guy is a score Quentin Jackson who leads the way with 14 how about the and one yeah and I think it's just uh, you know addition by subtraction and why do I say that gone is Marcus Williams right uh, he's not here he ran their show he was the point guard but if you think of their season and Marcus was a major part of it, but they had a lot of guards that you got to figure out minutes. Mm -hmm. You miss Williams when he goes. But what it does is it shrinks. All of a sudden, there's more minutes for all the other guards. And what happens is guys get more comfortable. The last two ball games, they just look like a different team offensively. We know they're going get, to get after you defensively. Can they stay with it? Are they big enough to handle things inside? You got to be real big to defend Charles Bediaco two feet from the basket. By the way, AM now 14 points off of seven Bama turnovers. Such a comfort level for Buzz on the guys he has out there, and this is one of them. Wade I, Taylor, the fourth, who's terrific, had a great freshman year. He's fearless. Now, there's a good and bad part about being fearless. You might take a bad shot or two. Right. He's had a fabulous freshman you've season. been a fan of his game all year I really long. like him I, again he's, he doesn't back down from any challenge he's, he's had some impressive ball game at 25 at Arkansas 19 against Tennessee freshman from Lancaster Texas Ellis drills the triple from the corner such a variety pack on the offensive end for Alabama they've got so many guys that can beat you off the dribble and also so many that can knock in threes We've already had five ties in this game. Here's Wade Taylor. Good with the basketball. Again, confident. We'll make jump shots. We'll put it on the floor. We'll take it hard. And then Ellis from the corner. Got to get to him quick, more quickly. You know, it's interesting. Alabama comes in the number one scoring team in the league. Over 80 points a game. Bediaco returned to sender on that one. That's his second block. And a 
blocking foul. They block Hugh foul. Jackson. I think he might have been inside the restricted area. It really has, and in a lot of ways, you wonder where Alabama would, would be without him because they're not very big. Right. I mean, right. you, you take him out of the lineup, and they become a very small team. He's the one true rim protector they have. Shackelford guarded by Coleman. Might be a mismatch. Shackelford certainly feels that way. And yeah, Coleman ate him up. Shot clock under 10 for Davison. I look at Coleman move his feet. Impressive. Flying in for the rebound, Tyrese Radford. And Coleman 6'8", 245, and stayed with two guards on that possession. Uh, he has put together transfer, former Duke Blue Devil. Hefner. Beautiful. Nice feed to Coleman on the slam. You know Hefner's in. He's a three-point shooter. And so when he came off the screen, the defense runs at him. He puts it on the floor, creates a mismatch. Weak side defense has to help. Good pass, easy layup. Davis in. Drive and kick to Quinterly. Out to Miles on a three. Alabama still shoots about 30 trays a game. There's a turnover. Steal and an off-balance shot by Bediaco. Taylor lost it in the lane, and that'll be a rare turnover on the Aggies. Ancient Alabama three-point shooting down from an efficiency standpoint, 31%. But well, you wouldn't know it when that guy's shooting at Shackelford's at 37. And how would you leave him open? I don't and, know. And the coaching staff is looking <laughs> at each other like, of all the guys. That's the guy you got to guard from forgot, downtown. Yeah, I forgot number five. Reach in foul on Darius Miles. Saturday is the final day of the SEC basketball regular season. Another quadruple header. The Auburn Tigers have lost a home game in a year and a half. The Gamecocks will try to spoil the jungle with an upset. If they can do it, that'll be Saturday at 1 o'clock. Yeah, we know Auburn, uh, they, they fly high in the jungle, don't they? My goodness. Wow. You, you and I had, had two recent games yeah. there, both on Wednesday nights, by the way. Sometimes Wednesday Midweek crowds can be a little bit fickle, not at the jungle. I mean, they are no. waiting outside an hour and a half before tip. The student section is lit, as the kids like to say, John Sunbold, and they get after you. You know, it is, uh, it's pure entertainment when you walk in. Not only the jungle themselves, but then the team that gets on the floor. Auburn's an entertaining team, and they put on quite a show. Sometimes style matters, and they are a lot of fun to watch. Open three. Javon Quinterly from downtown. Boys, he shot the ball well the last two ball games. Seven of eight from beyond the three-point line in a season that he has absolutely struggled making three-point shots. This is the time of year Quinterly came alive last year. Remember, he was the SEC tournament MVP a year ago as Taylor hits the floater. And here's what eats Nate Oates up. Quinterly, who's as quick as he does, gets beat off the dribble and gives up penetration that the freshman, Wade Taylor, just goes by right. and makes a little five-foot shot. Taylor again trying to blow by Quinterly. And Taylor got caught in the corner, says, timeout. I got nowhere to go with it. Well, 520 to go first half. First timeout burned by either Sunbelt second team. Look uh, at you. Over six assists of all games. So it's kind of a sibling rivalry. She's a senior, he's a freshman. Are play you, a lot of pickup games. She's uh, eighth in the country in assists. See, I can always provide on you for that hidden nugget. So they, she could be in that championship game. Right. So when you see her, you'll think ah, her little brother. I, I like the intel you're dropping. Keep it coming. I could use a, a little more of that between now and Monday evening. <laughs> <laughs> Fill you in on Sunbelt information. <laughs> uh, Nearing five minutes to go, first half, 30-30, our score. Shackelford has led the way with 12 points. He'll line up another three. 
That time didn't get the legs into it. Mike, I'm going to tell you, Henry Coleman can flat out move his feet on the defensive end. He's matched up because of all the switching AM is doing. Almost every possession, he's going to end up having to guard a guard, and right. he stays in front of them. They don't beat him off the dribble. Yeah, he is a physical specimen that can guard just about any position on the floor. Davison stripped by Taylor, and then Taylor slips himself. A great hustle and more great defensive maneuvering by the Aggies. Good hustle. This is this Aggie team, though, right? They 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 just they're pests. Fresh bodies that come in. Andre Gordon back in the lineup. He might be their best on-ball defender. Had a had a start of the season that he made a lot of three points. Remember how he was shooting the ball so well? Mm -hmm. It's it's gone down. But again, if you get into league play, everybody has scouted you, know how to play. Especially, guard you. especially this time of year, right? That's, that's, Winterly, that's when he's at his best, is on the bounce and on the attack. That, that, that's pretty basketball. The, the shot, right? You don't see a lot of that in today's world, but just a running high bank shot. Radford tried to split the double. Lucky he didn't give it away. Gordon drops one down low to Coleman. We got a scrum right along the baseline. Squirts out to Quinterly. Here come the tide. Quinterly alley oop, and it just grazed the rim. Otherwise, Davison had a slam. And Coleman bumping bodies with Gurley. That'll be a foul on Henry Coleman. Timeout on the floor. Bama up by it. But Anim has not had to settle for any desperation kind of shots. Seem like they're getting what they want. 18 points in the paint for AM to your point. Most of those are on penetration. Shackelford between the legs, drive and kick. It's Jawan Gary into the game for Alabama. Shot clock at five. How about three? How about a step back three? Another good defensive possession by the Aggies. Ratford, strong take, and bottled up that time. Great defense by Gary. So think of the value of a guy like Radford, who is the Aggies four man, let's say. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, and you think, well, he, he can't play the four spot as a 6'2 player. But he does, because he rebounds well, he's physical. But he handles it so well, so his matchup when he's on right. offense, he can get the ball where he wants to get it. And on defense, they do a lot of switching. They've got to be active because they might have mismatches inside. Great pass. Oh, Gary missed the bunny. It looked like he was trying to go up for the slam. Maybe got a flat tire. Inside, Gurley. That time, Gary finishes at the rim. Couple smart possessions by Alabama. We know they like to throw it across court, but now they're cutting better. Especially Gary, last two possessions. Good cuts. That puts a lot of pressure on this Aggie defense. Someone's got to take a cutter, and if they do, then guys are more open outside. Well, and that's the thing that Nate Oates is so quick to remind people when they say, well, Alabama's just a three point shooting team. But if you look at it and break down their analytics, they score a lot of layups, and it all starts with the cutting. Well, Buzz Williams said it perfectly in his media press conference this week. He said Alabama just puts stress on you, mm -hmm. whether it's the pace, whether it's the talent, whether it's offensive rebounding. There's just stress. They keep coming at you at different angles. That is the Nate Oates way. He's a huge analytics guy. I mean, you talk with Nate Oates, and he, it, it's like Rain Man. Like he's just spitting out numbers left and right. He's not even looking at a sheet of paper, but. You know, he's been that way since he was a teacher at Romulus High School and then great success at Buffalo before he got the job in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, he has done a phenomenal job here. And the guy on the other end, Buzz Williams, I'm not so sure he's not any different, right? His numbers are all in that head. Right. About 
He can rattle off how many shot attempts they've had. Yeah. You know, Alabama's shot 1,014 times and they've made 472. And, I mean, just <laughs> the numbers keep coming out. Great take by Davidson to the rim. Alabama up by four now. The coaching in this league, when everybody wants to know about where did it all start, how did this league improve to kind of a low point, it all starts with the coaching. Davison, look out. Wow. Hydraulics for the freshman out of Letta Hatchie, Alabama. Diara, wow, banging oh bodies midair. The sophomore from Queens, New York. Oh, how do you silence a crowd? You go one on two and <laughs> take a bump. <laughs> Degree of difficulty high. Backdoor cut, and there's a breakdown on the Aggies. Gary. Yeah, you're right. Breakdown. Lack of communication. Buzz Williams stepped up, and he told Radford, slow it down. Yeah. Right? Need a possession. They need a bucket here. Even though it's late in the first half, this crowd has become involved. Under a minute to go, first half. Ratford on a three. Ratford, nothing but the bottom of the net. That's what a possession. What a possession when they needed it. Henderson, not a threat to score, but as a high strong he is, he's usually able to move guys around and I'm not going to say unorthodox but the way Buzz Williams plays defense at times, he's not necessarily stuck on a big. Mm -hmm. He's out on the point right here playing the defense. He'll have different matchups. There'll be a lot of switches. And Bama will play for the final shot of the half up by three. Davison taking some air out of the basketball. That's Shackelford in the left corner. Quinterly up top with seven. Into the hands of Gurley with five. Back out to Davison. Going to be a desperation shot. And defended very well by the Aggies. Valiant effort by Texas A&M to the first 20 minutes. It's a three-point game. 40-37. to 37. Bama on top as we take it. As that he did. And he got a couple open looks early. And he got rid of them. Uh, A&M did a better job late in that first half at Corral and Shackleford. First half stats presented by Ram, Shackelford, and Radford each put on an offensive show. The turnover's big for both sides. We'll see if either team can clean it up a little bit against two defenses going very hard at it tonight. I think Nate Oates is happy with the defensive effort overall. And of course, Buzz Williams known for good defense with AM. Yeah, the only thing for Alabama defensively, they cannot allow the ball handlers, whoever they are for AM, to just mm -hmm. get to the paint every right. time. And they, they were able to do that that first half. It was a little bit too much of that for sure. Particularly with Tyrese Ratford, who's terrific, already above his season average with a 12 point half. Davison with a drive and kick, an open three. That's Alabama's offense in a nutshell. Offensive rebound, Shackelford, no, and Jackson corrals it. My buddy Ako made a phenomenal tap of the basketball that Shackelford couldn't finish the play. You mentioned what's at stake for both these teams. The seeding for the SEC tournament, if you're Bama, you could be anywhere from 5 to 10. AM could be anywhere between 5 and 11. Yeah, those are crazy numbers. Such a log jam after those top four teams. There's a steal by Jackson. Jackson will flush it home. Telegraph a pass just a little bit. Q Jackson's going to make you pay. 13 points for Jackson, the leading scorer for the Aggies at 14 a game. Alabama trying to win their sixth game in the last seven tries. Davison wide of the mark. Here come the Aggies. Great block out by Radford on Betty Ako down under the bucket. Taylor had a good look at it. Coleman, nice job on the offensive glass. Johnson weaving his way with a circus shot. And all of a sudden, the Aggies have the lead. Well, Q is as good, and maybe as any, at being comfortable at making an offensive play. 
can finish by the rim, can shoot it outside. He's gotten much better this season with his jump shot. Another steal. Radford. Two on two. Radford finishes on the other end. Aggie basketball partner. Do it on the defensive end. Convert. Another turnover. Yeah, and a turnover again on Alabama. Active hands that time by Wade Taylor. Take a look at the circus shot by Q Jackson. We know he can finish. Active hands by Radford. Finishes with his power. Boy, sloppy start in his first half, or second half. For the Spama squad. A 6-0 run for the Aggies to start this second half. Radford on a three. Left it short. He knew it. Chased after it and saves it. What a play. Johnson gets hammered in the lane. Good save. It was the same play they ran earlier. Take a look at the hustle by Radford and look, he saves it to Jackson and just go into the defender. Quentin Jackson to the free throw line. And knocks down the first. Jackson, very steady free throw shooter at 85%. Now, Texas A&M has come here to play tonight and trying to pick up the elusive quad one win on the road against a red-hot Alabama team. It's a team that's become quite comfortable. Uh, not only with the coaching staff, but with each other. Last two games that they've won, solid offensively, good defensively. An 8-0 run to start the second half, and that will cool the flames off at least a bit. Keon Ellis with a mid-range jumper. You know, because of the Aggies' pace and how they're playing, especially on defensive end, the crowd has only been into it at the end of that first half. And now it's Alabama getting a turnover, at least temporarily. Aggies get it back, and Coleman drops the hammer. What a play. Obasaki with the active hands when all guys are on the floor. Aggies have been relentless on defense. Here to start off the second half. Jackson almost had another one. And an offensive foul on Shackelford. Coleman drew it. Henry Coleman's got a chance to be a special player in this league. He has got terrific feet. We talked about the first half. His size at 268, 245. They are playing for the drive. And instead of the other defenders hanging around inside, they're playing for that pass outside. Mm -hmm. So you got one protecting the drive inside. The rest will be chasing those passes to the three-point shooters. Boy, has this game changed in a hurry. A&M up by five, a 13-2 run if you go back to the end of the first half. Radford guarded by Davison. Five on the shot clock for Jackson. Pull up jumper. Back iron. Here comes Davison on the attack. Bama with numbers to Ellis. Ellis got it to go. Plus the foul. Tough finish. Talking about the NIT, they might even be talking about the NCAA tournament. Quentin Jackson has been terrific. 17 points. The Aggies have burst out, burst out onto a huge run here to start this second half. The and one cuts it back to two. You see the metrics on Texas A&M. Lenardi's got them out now. Of course, you pick up a quad one victory here tonight. That would be three on the season, and that might change the conversation for Buzz Williams gang. Taylor slicing dicing and a beautiful finish Henry Coleman should get an assist and I say that because he was in the post He just cleared everybody right. out behind him. He just sealed the lane wide open for Taylor to finish that play 
Six points for the talented freshman Wade Taylor, the fourth, and the lead is back to four. Rojas takes it strong, and Ratford whistled for the foul. Take a look what Henry Coleman does now because of the switching defenses. He's got a small guy on him, but when he keeps Quinterly off wide open lane for Taylor, the weak side defense all the way across too far to get there. Rojas, the senior out of Jamestown, New York. Which in Alabama is not a big team, so they need quality minutes out of Rojas. There might be a game or two in the postseason where Betty Ako gets into foul trouble. And you really need guys like Rojas to step up. Yeah, Rojas uh, tore the ACL back last January. Is only played 13 games this season, but there have been some terrific minutes that he's provided his squad. Tough shot. Oh, my goodness. Quentin Jackson has ignited in this second half. Now 19 points for the game. And he was simply looking for a whistle yeah. once he got the bump. Again, leads them in scoring with 14. Jackson trying to take it to the next level in this ball game. Quinterly, another turnover. Two on one. Aggies. Jackson all the way. Jackson banks it home. Obasaki with the tip of the basketball and the steal. They go to the other way. I, I mean, how much of this, John, is great defense by the Aggies? Yes, but 14 turnovers, that's a little careless. Ellis responds with a three on the other end. Boy, Ellis has been huge. If he has not stepped up like he has, AM be up 10 or 12. 11 for Ellis. Ratford off a curl. Not that time. And Ellis boards it for Bama. How does Alabama take care of the basketball? The final 13 and change. Good ball movement. Quinterly passed up the three. Ellis won't. Pretty good possession that time. Jackson lobs that one. Radford saves oh. it but can't. That just one of the rare mistakes Quentin Jackson has made tonight. Yeah, and really uncalled for. Unforced error. You know, the value of a, of a Jackson and Radford together on the floor is their ability to, to create mismatches mm -hmm. off the dribble. Yeah. And if they shoot it well, if this team shoots well, A&M, because that's where they've struggled at times, yeah. they are a tough matchup. They, they might be small on the defensive end, but offensively, then you've got to chase and guard them. So good on the dribble drive tonight. Quinterly sets up Davison on an open three, in and out. Bediaco, rather, yeah, Bediaco had it. Aggies clear it. And Gordon will set up Ratford. That's going to be offensive. I'll tell you what, Ratford's a tough kid on the floor on one end. And Ellis is tough on the other, taking the charge. It's a second foul. And the man they call Boots, Tyrese Ratford. This has been a... A fun basketball game. 13 minutes, 10 seconds remaining. I get the feeling we're on our way to a heck of a finish. Sometimes the most dangerous kind of team to play this time of year is a desperate one. The Yankees could desperately use a victory like this late in the year. Shackleford, deep three. And out of bounds to the Aggies. You know, Mike, what's interesting when you watch this game and, and is that it seems like AM, they're getting better offensive possessions than Alabama is. Right. The shots Alabama is, is getting are not that great right now. Let's see where they turn to here for a shot contact. And that's going to be a foul away from the ball on Alabama as. Henderson hits the deck. I think Quinterly got him. Quinterly guarding uh, Henderson was setting the screen. 
Quinterly tried to shoot the gap, ran right over. Three fouls each way, 12.36 to go. As Coleman checks back in for the Aggies, Henderson will get a rest. Jackson guarded by Shackelford. Hefner. Hefner on a three. Hayden Hefner. Good ball fake. Shooter. And Ellis knew it. Couldn't get to him. Oh, beautiful up and under move by the freshman Davison. Terrific. Back and forth we go. The lead is four for the Aggies. Diara dribbled into traffic. Lucky not to turn that one over. Jackson hounded by Shackelford. Crossover. In the paint. No. Bediaco altered that shot. Ellis finds Quinterly, and Quinterly can't hang on. Another turnover on Alabama. That's 15 for the game. Well, back and forth we go, Parker, and not uh, here so far. Went to the locker room, down by three, now up by four, shooting lights out, and again led by Quentin Jackson's 21 points on seven of nine shooting. Jackson lines up a three. Jackson continues to light it up. How so, about Quentin Jackson? So, Mike, offensively, if Jackson's off the dribble, they're not keeping him out of the lane. So now your defense is chasing and chasing. Gordon passed up the shot. Jackson then delivers. 24 for Jackson. His career Beautiful. high is 31. And then Pediaco on an alley-oop response. So now it's up to Shackelford. Can you keep Quentin Jackson out of the paint? Once he gets there, it's so difficult. Everybody's searching and trailing. Here's Jackson. Finds a cutter along the baseline and then turning it over was Gordon. Bama trying to make a pay on the other end. Davison to Ellis. Shackelford for three. Off the mark. Top floor for the rebound is Coleman. That's a good shot. A good one more pass by Ellis. Gordon back out to Jackson 10 to shoot and Gordon's a better catch and shoot guy than he is, is off the bounce Around the screen Jackson finds daylight and hits another one. He is in the zone 26 points for the senior out of Los Angeles can't guard him can't keep him in front jump shot on fire Under 10 to play Davison on a runner missed it Coleman boards it had the lob to Bediaco Largest lead for Texas A&M, seven points. Coleman takes it right at the shot blocker, Beniaco. This is an Aggie team full of confidence. Quinterly gets it to drop, and a timeout called Alabama. Seven-point game with 9.22 to play. Texas A&M looks it's a tough matchup. He's six foot five. He's a legit six five long bouncy And Alabama's guards no matter who they put on him or who winds up in a switch. They haven't had an answer Yeah, quick uh, quick the ability his speed is terrific This time Jackson posting up and it gets bumped and fouled. How about that? So Quentin Jackson doing it in every way well, the matchup, they put uh, Ellis, the best defender, best two-way player for Alabama. He was guarding Jackson on that possession. 15 points in the second half alone. Yeah, they ran Jackson off a high screen to post him up down low. But if you're a teammate of Jackson, now all of a sudden you just got to be ready because all eyes defensively for Alabama are trying to contain what Jackson's done with the basketball. It'll be fun to watch because Ellis is a heck of an on-ball defender. That's going to be offensive. No basket. Offensive foul on Diara. But those are the kind of opportunities you're going to get. 
Jackson came up from a low screen. Now, Diara should have stopped before that. He had a wide open shot. There's going to be some avenues as they try to try to get Q out of the offense possession. Wholesale substitutions for the Aggies as Diara and Hefner get a well deserved rest. Seven point game. Nine minutes remaining here at Coleman Coliseum. Alabama's won five out of six. The Aggies have won three out of four. And a block foul against Texas A&M. I believe wow. that's Coleman. <laughs> wow. wow. Might have had another, I thought they had another turnover. I, I, it certainly looked like it. Buzz Williams uh, <laughs> clearly wanted to, to do the wraparound. Right. Right? He wanted to throw it baseline, but he lost it out of bounds, and then the block call came in. Buzz Williams got an early technical foul in this game, so all he can do is give kind of a, an incredulous look. You know, this is the third year for both coaches. They've only played one time. Last year, this game was going to be at College Station, but there was an ice storm in Texas. And because of the pandemic later on, they never made that game up. Right. They've only played, these coaches have only played one time against each other. That's a good point. Man. Texas a and missed more time than anybody last year due to COVID. Jackson, off the oh, bounce. drops the dime to Coleman. He's too good tonight. Q Jackson is off the bounce. Stop and go, blow by, delivers the assist. Quick shot on the other end. Rojas, offensive rebound. He'll go to the line. Nine-point lead for Texas A&M. Saturday, again, the final day of the SEC's basketball regular season. A lot of different seating at stake. Auburn trying to hold on to that number one seed. And he'll take on the Gamecocks at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Try to remain undefeated in the jungle this season. I'll tell you another interesting game that will take place over the weekend. Florida is at home against Kentucky. Hmm. Florida is the closest thing we have to a true bona fide bubble team in this league. If they win that game... A lot of things could move in their favor. The pendulum could certainly swing. Yeah, that, that but that's game, a big if. Yeah, that game does it. As I sit here and watch this game, Mike, uh, th this, you talk about a stark contrast of looking at one bench to the other bench and one coach to the other coach. And, and the home crowd is trying to get their squad into this game because they are not in it emotionally. And AM is all in. Jackson shows he's human, finally misses a shot. And the Aggies will get it along the baseline when we come. This has a feel it can go much deeper than none. I mean, they've got to find some ways to get stops. Their offense is out of sync. I think Nate Oates is frustrated, though, defensively. And AM is shooting 60% in the second half. This guy's done most of the damage. And what you do with a guy like Jackson, if you're the Aggies, you keep feeding it, and then he finds guys will be open because of how much focus is on him. Shot clock at beautiful. three. Alley-oop to Coleman. A beautiful look for Taylor. Eleven point lead, the largest of the game. And the other part about it is the Aggies are making Alabama when they get a half court set at least guard twenty to twenty five seconds. Right. So that doesn't allow Alabama to get in any kind of flow. This crowd is not into it. And this last time, Taylor with a terrific pass, an easy finish. You know, I, I mentioned it earlier. A and M had an eight game winning streak. And had a 4-0 start in league play. And you and I were at Reed Arena. I mean, the crowd was electric, right? Yeah. They're up 13 in the second half against Big Blue Nation. But they win that game. Who knows how their season looks like right now? They lose it in heartbreaking fashion. They go on to lose eight in a row. And the season just kind of got derailed for a while in a very competitive and unforgiving SEC. This team looks like the one that started 4-0, and they continue to get points in the paint. A flush for Henderson. And a loose ball, a bad pass by Taylor behind the back, knocked away. And look what I found. Henderson gets an easy bucket. 
What does Alabama have to do differently? Well, they've got to find a way to get stopped. If you don't get stops, and right now there are no stops in sight because they can't keep the ball in front of them. And, Mike, when you don't do that, there's just too much pressure behind. And, and then what it does is it's forced Alabama in kind of a pressure situation offensively. And it's not as if Alabama has been rolling offensively either. 37% from the field. It seems like everybody is kind of collectively cooled off as Quinterly hits the first. Now, one thing I love about Nate Oates in the three years you and I have covered him, he does not sugarcoat. He does not mince words. No, he does. No, and, he does. and every time we have had him, the first words out of his mouth have been, we have to defend better. Yeah. Well, they lost so, honestly, they lost so much from yeah. a year ago. But that doesn't mean that what they have can't be better defensively. Because they are at times. Here comes the crowd. Jackson working on Ellis. Great matchup, and this time Ellis and the Tide win it. And then Alabama almost gives it right up. Rojas inside. <laughs> Terrific hands by Rojas on the defensive end. Three ball from Taylor. Not a good shot too early in the shot clock on the road when the crowd's going loud. That's going to be a foul on Coleman. And that's his third. Yeah, I told you that uh, Taylor's fearless, but sometimes you, you got to be smart. Right. When a crowd's in the game, you don't take a quick one. Rojas had the active hands, almost turned it over. Gets it back and finishes the play. Rewarded from one end to the other. Nice job by Quinterly to make the most out of that kind of broken play. He's fifth in the league in assists. Picks up another dime there. And again, Wade Taylor will learn, even if he's a freshman, even though by now you've been around a while. Every possession they've had, they've been able to make Alabama play defense. That was too quick of a three, and all of a sudden you get a chance for Alabama to go to the free throw line. This crowd now gets back in ball. Shackelford hits the front end of the one and one. 17 points a game for Jaden Shackelford. He has been the most consistent of that talented quartet of guards for the tie. Rojas, offensive rebound, then he gives it away. Ratford on the steal and the slam. What an exchange. Anticipation by Radford. Quinterly. Trapped in trouble. Quinterly, nowhere to go. And that'll be a reach in foul, I believe, on Radford. Yeah, that I was think, right in front of us. Well, Radford got him in the face. He got over anxious. He had him. They had him trapped. Right. It's right in front of us. Yeah, so it's yeah. easy, though, the official. You've got him here, and then right when he reaches with the, the left comes around and get him right in the face. Yeah, didn't didn't have to because he's bottled up. I mean he's Quinterly has absolutely nowhere to go. I thought maybe he would burn a timeout there. And he's the benefactor of the foul by Radford. Ninth team foul, so another one and one. This time for Quinterly. Critical miss. Still a 10-point game. So the two ball handlers, Q Jackson for Tyrese Radford when they get it, that's the two that have not been contained by this Alabama team. Jackson back out, Radford. Spot and fire, wide open three, and he delivers. Yeah, beautifully run, beautiful set. 19 for Radford. Ellis, left alone is Quinterly, left it short, and then Ratford bobbled it and lost it, and now a reach-in foul on Bama. Chuck Jones says, too much contact, I believe they got Gurley. That's his second. 
of 5.02 to go. And I bet you there's a lot of people scoreboard watching around the Southeastern Conference saying the Aggies are up 13 in Tuscaloosa, 74 points. Yeah, they've dominated the second half. And if it if the momentum doesn't change, this will keep stretching. Alabama's having a hard time scoring. And AM is not having a hard time scoring. They're getting any shot they want on the offensive end. They're shooting 64% in the second half. Again, let's go back. Jackson with the ball or Radford with the ball. Tough to contain tonight. Jackson blows by. Sets up Radford. Oh. The two-man game continues. It's been the Jackson-Radford show. It's all smiles and the emotion sets them up defensively. They get in half-court sets defensively. Been able to contain Alabama off the dribble in this second half. Shackelford Money. delivers. And boy, do they need that. Well, he's made a lot of big shots in his... Uh, Alabama Jersey days. No question about it. But as you keep saying, partner, you've got to get some stops. You got to get the ball if you're defensively out of Jackson's hand. He's just playing with everybody. Now Radford has done the same. Did the, Radford did it more in the first half. Same thing though. He's in the paint. Radford offensive. Got a little greedy that time. Yeah, one step too far. Yeah. But he, but okay, he's still in the paint, so that it's going to cause. Your defense to shrink. See the white jerseys? Let's say he stops one step before. You got three guys around him. That means guys are open. Now that's critical. Gets the fourth foul on Radford. So despite the fact he's got a season high 22, he'll go to the bench. And we'll see how that affects what the Aggies do on both ends of the floor. And again, token pressure up, so you've got to run more shot clock. Alabama trying to find an opening. There it is. Ellis on the slam. The dish from Rojas. You know, the bench, the coaches for Alabama want Ellis to pick up Jackson more full court. I think Ellis knows he can't contain her. Hefner to Henderson. And Rojas just raked the arm, an easy call inside. Aggies will be at the free throw line when we come back. But what a show. Minus uh, Marcus Williams, who's no longer part of the team for now. It got, it, it's got more minutes than what Buzz Williams and his staff has done during and after that eight-game losing streak. I think the ball has been much more in a Q Jackson's hands than it ever was before. Well, I mean, he's playing like a superstar tonight. I, we've seen a lot of Quentin Jackson. There's times where he will Look at this. explode. Offensive rebound on oh, the free boy. throw. We've had seven ties. We've had nine lead changes. And the law firm of Radford and Jackson have combined for 25 points this half. Bama as a team with 26 points this Shot half. clock at five. Diara can pull it. Oh my, Diara with a three. Goodness, not known for his outside shooting. Diara, late clock from downtown. What else can the Aggies do right in this second half? Switching everything out front. Turnover. Oh, Jackson almost tipped it. That's why Quinterly could see. San Diara. I'd shot, send big shots, and he has game winner against Abilene Christian early in this season. And look at the reaction on the bench. When you listen to Buzz Williams talk about Hassan Diara and how he found him at a Queens, New York, the kind of unique path in recruiting, and he loves that kid as much as any player he's ever coached. That was a special shot right there. Alabama has got to start getting stops, two and a half to play. Nope. Partner a couple minutes ago, I, I said when it was a nine-point game, I said it, it could get to 20, right? Yeah. Alabama hasn't had any answers on this defensive end. Tiara, whole lot of dribbling. Can't finish, and Ellis clears. Tide need buckets in a hurry. That will not do it. Another turnover. That's 19 on the night. Wade Taylor on the defense. 
Ellis almost tried to pull it back instead of attacking. Lost control. I mean, what a difference of emotions on the benches, Mike. I mean, it, it's the only emotion on the Alabama bench is from the coaches. Well, and he's not even on the court for Alabama, the players. You know, sometimes a, a team just kind of takes your soul a little bit. I mean, the way yep. the Aggies have come out in this second half, I mean, from the opening tip, they go on a 7-0 run, and they just have not taken their foot off the gas, and neither is that guy a rare miss for Jackson. Quinterly. And Nate Oates will... Burn a timeout that leaves the tide with one with a minute 37 to play. Don't forget coming up tonight. They, they didn't hit the threes. They're right at their season average. They're, they're 31, 32 percent tonight. That hasn't been the issue. The things that you've talked about defensively have been the issue. And of course, the turnovers on offense. Again, and when I watch, can one guy like Ellis take it out of Jackson's hands? He can't. Finds his play because he's 6'5", jumps over the top, gives it to Taylor, gives it to Coleman, and easy two. This has become pure dissection right now. I mean, they have been precise with everything. Quinterly hits the three ball. I don't cut it to 12. Got and m now makes sure they get set in what they want to do. One minute, one minute, one minute. Taylor draws the foul with exactly one minute remaining in this game if the Aggies hold on and win it it'll be their 19th win of the year and improve to eight and nine in conference play but this will rank right up there with the biggest wins of the year in terms of the most impressive to beat a top 25 team on the road who by the way had won five out of the last six and oh by the way has beaten about every great team in the country right right I right. mean this is as impressive win as you're going to find in the league, going on the road and doing what they're doing. Yeah, look, you, you, you can lose your mind trying to figure out the net and how many how many slots you're going to go up versus down after a big win. I, I just, I have to think this is going to bump them up there quite a few spots and set things up for a run here with one game left in the regular season. That's a home game, by the way, against Mississippi State and then the SEC tournament. So Buzz Williams tells his team we got one week this week we got one more week and if you guys want to play basketball these two weeks each of these four games are going to matter or these two games and then we go to the tournament it's going to matter and, and to see if they can play more well none of that would have even been relevant if they prop if they wouldn't have won the game tonight I mean, they almost had Correct. to do it and they came in here they played well in the first half but still down three in intermission the second half that the Aggies played tonight might be the best half they played all year long. And Mike, let's think about it. They didn't have a shoot around today. They flew in last night, got here at 430, shot around at 5 o'clock. And what do you think about that? Well, they didn't do it last game on the road Ole Miss. So, I mean, they do things, Buzz does things his way and how they want to do it and how the team feels. He gives a lot of ownership to the players, and he talks about that a lot who's an assistant coach, who's the associate coach, right. who's in charge of this, who's in charge of that. It's all the players he talks about. And when we watched him tonight warm up, when they went in and then to come out for the second part of the warm-up, they never came back out. Right. When they were introducing the team, they had just kind of gotten to the sideline. So, yeah, they're doing it their way, what they're comfortable with. And there's a trust... Uh, a trust amongst these guys on this team and this is the third win in a row and a, a massive massive victory for this Aggie squad first team against a ranked opponent in the last eight chances for the Aggies dating back to last season this is a 50 point second half I mean you could not play a better half of basketball than what Texas A&M did in the final 20 minutes here at Coleman Coliseum and who knows we may be talking about this game for Texas A&M in a few weeks in terms of what it will ultimately ultimately it's, mean. It's about how hot you get at the end of the year. Absolutely. <laughs> this is as good a team as I've seen in a while. Well, this will be a stunner.